Morning folks, it is Monday the 25th of May, Bank Holiday Monday. It's another bright and glorious day outside, as you can see the light reflecting in off the window of my specs. And it's a great morning, so it is another morning that we are blessed with by God. So let's come together and let's read from God's Word. Let's read Acts chapter 17 together this morning. Paul and Silas then travelled through the towns of Ampolis and Antolia and came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue service, and for three Sabbaths in a row, he used the scriptures to reason with the people. He explained the prophecies and provided that the Messiah and proved that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead. He said, "This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah." Some of the Jews who listened were persuaded, and John joined Paul and Silas, along with many God-fearing Greek men and quite a few prominent women. But some of the Jews were jealous, so they grant, gathered some troublemakers from the marketplace to form a mob and started a riot. They attacked the home of Jason, searching for Paul and Silas, so they could drag them out into the crowd. Not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some of the other believers instead and took them to the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted, and now they are disturbing our city too. And Jason has welcomed them into his home. They are all guilty of treason against Caesar, for they profess allegiance to another king named Jesus. The people of the city, as well as the, t the city council, were thrown into turmoil by these reports. So the officials forced Jason and the other believers to postpone, and then they released them. That very night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. When they arrived there, they went to the Jewish synagogue, and the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. As a result, many of the Jews believed, as did many of the prominent Greek women and men. But then, some Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God in Berea, and they went there and stirred up trouble. The believers acted at once, sending Paul onto the coast while Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those escorting Paul went up with him all the way to Athens. Then they returned to Berea and instruct, with instructions for Silas and Timothy to hurry and join him. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply troubled by all the idols he saw everywhere in the city. He went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles and he spoke daily in the public square to all who happened to be there. He also had a debate with some of the um, Stoic philosophers when he told them about Jesus and his resurrection. They said, what's this babbler trying to say with these strange ideas he's picked up? Others said, he seems to be preaching about some foreign gods. Then they took him to the high council of the city. Come and tell us about these new teachings, they said. You're saying some rather strange things and we want to know what it's all about. It should be explained that all the Athenians, as well as the foreigners in Athens, seem to spend their time discussing the latest ideas. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I noticed you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had this inscription on it. To an unknown God, this God whom you, whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples, and human hands cannot serve his needs, for he has no needs. He gives himself life and breath to everything. He satisfies every need. From one man he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand that they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for nations to seek after gods, and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist. And some of your own prophets, poets have said this, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think that God is an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. 
God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he commands everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he had appointed. And he proved to everyone um, who this by raising him from the dead. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection from the dead, some laughed in contempt. But others say, we want to hear more about this later. That ended Paul's discussion with them, but some joined him and became believers. Among them was Dionysus, a member of the council, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Amen. And that's the end of Acts chapter 17. Again, it's a chapter whenever you see the two extremes in human behaviour. One, you see how people are challenged about God, they react. They don't like things outside their comfort zone. They rebel, they try to get rid of Paul. And on the other hand, you hear and see those who want to talk to Paul, who want to reason with him, who want to learn more. I wonder what you're like. I wonder what I'm like. Do we, do we like things which push us outside our comfort zone or do we run away from them? Are we scared of things because we just can't reason them? Or are we prepared to, to sit down and to talk and to think things through? And maybe, maybe recognise that there are things far greater than us happening in this world. That God is, a, is an awesome God who is far more powerful um, than we can ever get our heads around. You know, we like to be able to explain everything, don't we? We say that science explains everything. Um, there's a scholar who, who coined the phrase, science tells us how, but God tells us why. And he also says in that it's God who invented science, um, not the other way around. So think about that today as you maybe get outside and do a bit of fresh air, if you can, in a garden, if you're going out for a walk. Maybe you're going to meet a couple of friends at social distance, as we can do now, outside. But as you go outside, just look up. Look around at the sky, at the clouds, at the sun. Maybe stop and listen. See if you can hear any birds singing. Maybe hear the breeze, gentle breeze come by. And think about how God has made all of that for us to enjoy. For us to realise that he is true and alive. And that he's interested in us. And that he loves us and cares for us. Try to open your mind to the possibility that God is out there. Let's pray. Father, so often we like to try and explain things away ourselves. So often we like to put things neatly in little boxes so that we can explain them. Forgive us, Lord, for not actually re recognising and realising what you have done and continue to do each and every day. Help us just to realise that you are there, that you are real, that you love us and care for us. Father, on this bank holiday day, no matter what we're doing right around the world, please be with us. Keep us safe, we pray. Help us to be sensible and considerate of others. Help us to be patient and not to lose our temper. And Lord, thank you for again for those who continue to serve us and work for us and keep the country running. Lord, just be with us this day, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Um, I trust that you stay well this morning. Uh, I trust that you stay safe. And, and everything that you would know God's blessing. You know, we are blessed. We're blessed as a people uh, because God has given us so much. We're blessed as a nation living in such a beautiful land. But we are blessed by what God does through Christ for us each and every day. We are blessed when we get up and we wake up in the morning and, and we can look out and see the wonder of his creation. So may our eyes be opened this day to the wonders of God. Take care. God bless.